G'day guys and welcome to another YouTube lesson. Today we're taking a look at finance, everyone's favourite topic. Maybe not, I like it, it's my favourite topic. And we're also going to take a look at strategies. This is our second lesson involved in strategies. Now, what are strategies is important. This is the things that a business can put in place to improve the financial performance of a business. And we can evaluate whether it's been done well, and often you'll need to. How do we evaluate it? Your five financial objectives of a business. Efficiency, liquidity, solvency, growth, and p -p profitability. So the financial strategy we're looking at today is working capital management. This looks at the liquidity of a business. And in particular, I want to have in your mind the current or liquidity or working capital ratio. All the same thing, but just different names. Liquidity, current, working capital ratio. Don't be thinking bank account. Be thinking instead balance sheet. And be thinking current assets divided by current liabilities. So current assets, we want more. Current liabilities, we want little, less. That's that current ratio. And that's, in essence, working capital. So a little quiz for you again. Cash flow looks at liquidity too, but not the ratio. It looks at your bank account and cash flow statements, money coming in, money going out of your account. Working capital management looks at liquidity ratio, your current assets compared to your current liabilities. More current assets, less current liabilities. Now, working capital management is a strategy because it's something that the finance business function can do to help improve the finances, as I mentioned, the liquidity of a business. I don't want to hear about profitability and other crap and things. I want to hear about liquidity. That's the objective this thing does. Profitability can do profitability and efficiency. This working capital looks at liquidity. Cash flow doesn't look at solvency. Cash flow looks at liquidity. All right, they don't have to look at everything. It involves controlling, which means managing. I are manage you students by controlling you, not that you listen or anything, but that's the aim. Controlling the current assets, okay, which include cash, accounts receivable, receivables, but accounts receivable and inventory, and also controlling the current liabilities, which include your payables, your loans slash your overdrafts. Now there's also two key strategies that can be used and they are leasing, leasing and sale and lease back. They're both very similar. All right, when you're asked to talk about strategies of working capital management, I want you to go for that leasing and sales and lease back because they're specifically strategies. All right, however, that being said, um, you know, all of them are strategies, you know, because we're part of the strategies, part of the syllabus. If you're asked for control of current assets, don't talk about leasing or sale and lease back. If you're asked to talk about control of current liabilities, you only talk about control of current liabilities, payables and loans overdrafts, not, say, leasing. You'll see what I mean when we do some examples later in class. Now, working capital management is the difference between the current assets and the current liabilities and can be expressed as an equation. So this is working capital, not the working capital ratio. Working capital is your current assets minus your current liabilities. You want on your balance sheet more current assets than you do current liabilities, and you just minus it. If it's positive, sweet as, mate. You're sorted in terms of having some liquidity and having working capital. If your current liabilities are bigger than your current um, assets, you're <coughs> screwed. You've got some problems with working capital. Now, your working capital ratio is current assets divided by your current liabilities. That might sound a bit confusing, but it's not. It's like net profit. It's not the same as the net profit ratio. All right, because you're comparing with the net profit ratio to sales. All right, so the work, either one, you want current assets to be bigger than current liabilities in both instances. For the ratio, you're just dividing it. Now, another definition that can be used for working capital is the current assets used in the day to day running of a business. Okay, working capital management, sometimes also referred to as liquidity, liquidity management. Now, I'm saying it a few times, but I want you to get it because it, it was hard for me. And I'm, you know, you know me, genius. 
Okay, it was hard for me to get it right at the start. The difference between working capital, working capital management, and cash flow management. So I'll say it again. Working capital is different from cash flow, as with cash flow management, you're looking simply at the cash, physical but mainly electronic, that goes into your account and comes out of your account, your bank account. Whereas working capital looks at the difference between your current assets and your current liabilities and what would happen if all of a sudden you needed to pay all your current liabilities, would you have enough current assets to make this happen? That's the question you need to ask yourself or you do you're running a business. Now there's three ways to improve a business's liquidity, their working capital. This is through improving its current assets, known as control of current assets, and through improving its current liabilities, control of current liabilities. And the third method is the strategies of leasing and sales and leaseback. I've already mentioned before, if you're asked specifically about control of current assets, you talk about cash, receivables, and inventories, and strategies I'm gonna give you in a sec from the textbook. You're asked to talk about control of current liabilities. You don't talk about leasing or sale and leaseback. Talk about payables, account payables, loans and overdraft. Again, I'll give you strategies in a bit. If you're asked to talk about strategies specifically, it's leasing or sales and leaseback. All right, now, under control of current assets. You're trying to control, okay, look after your current assets. So when looking at improving working capital, it's useful to go to a balance sheet. It's the balance sheet to improve both the current assets and the current liabilities. But the three current assets we have on the balance sheet usually is cash, cashola, accounts receivable, it says receivables in the syllabus, but it's accounts receivable, and inventories, sometimes said stock. They're the three things you can use to control your current assets. So the first one with cash. If you can increase and keep a, a reasonable amount of cash recorded in the balance sheet, then you will improve your liquidity, your working capital. Cash is king. How can you do that? What strategy can you use to improve the amount of cash you have on that balance sheet? Visualize your balance sheet on the left-hand side. I think that's your left, okay, depending on the camera. I don't know how that works. You've got cash up the top and your current asset. We want that to be higher. How can you do that? What your old mum say or your old pop or whatever? How do you save money? Yeah, my budget. Budgeting. That's the tool you use and a strategy to be able to increase your cash, your cash hour. All right. Receivables, accounts receivable. How can we increase that? If you can reduce your accounts receivable turnover ratio and get your clients to pay their accounts payable, this would improve liquidity as it's going to turn that um, potential cash into cash, all right? So, so let me give you an example here. When you're actually doing the ratio of current assets compared to current liabilities, using uh, factoring, and that's the tool that you can use here for receivables, it may not make that figure any bigger because you're basically, if you look on that left-hand side and you've got a thousand bucks in cash and a thousand dollars in accounts receivable, if you have your um, your clients pay their accounts receivable, that thousand dollars becomes zero, and your cash becomes one thousand that you had already plus another thousand, it's two thousand. That ratio is not going to change. It's not going to get better. So how is this a, a good strategy? What are you talking about? So how does this work? Accounts receivable don't always get paid. Sometimes businesses don't pay or pay very late. Cash is king. Cash is king. If you can move the money from the accounts receivable into cash, then you are in a more liquid position. Okay? In, in, in theory, your working capital is better because cash is better than potential. Maybe I might get a cash because it may not come. Sometimes <clears throat> bastards don't pay and then you don't get those things. All right. Inventories is the last control of current assets. You've heard of a thing I would assume before called JIT just-in-time inventory management. If you use this, then it would free up cash, and therefore, again, you, the side on the left, which is your current assets, having cash, cash receivable, and inventory, it's not going to make that number bigger in terms of your current ratio, but 
and I'll show you in class, you know, on the board to be able to give you examples of this. Why make a bigger butt? What's the rule? What's king? Imagery? Receivables? It's potential cash. Cash is cash. Cash is the money you've got there. It's the most liquid of assets. So with inventories, if I have a, an official term, I have a computer shop. I've got a crap load of computers. It's very, very technical. Crap load. If I don't sell them all, I only sell half of them and they become obsolete. They're too old. They're like me. They're old, decrepit. You never sell them. I have to write those off. It's potential cash. I may not make those sales. So if you can have just enough computers or just enough apples or just enough, uh, enough whatever, lipsticks, okay, so that your customers just get what they need, you can have the rest in cash and therefore that's guaranteed. It makes your business more liquid. You have better working capital. All right, that's the first strategies part of your will, control of current assets. And I apologize, I talk too much, I know. This one is a pretty big uh, lesson today. Control of current liabilities. There's two parts to the current liability side of the balance sheet. They are loans, including overdraft, and accounts payable. You can reduce either of these. A business can obviously improve its liquidity, its working capital. Okay, that's less the current assets compared to current liabilities. If current assets are the same, say two, and that was two, two to two. You can make that one, it's now two to one, it's a better ratio. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing is payables. Payables, if you didn't know, stands for accounts payable. That's, I'm Bunnings, that's what the carpenter must pay to me, what the plumber must pay to me, all right? How do we get this to happen? There are four ways to control the accounts payable. The method of business would use, actually, let me flip this around a little bit. Um, I'll say in this instance, I'm, I'm the carpenter and I've got to pay bunnies. We're doing it from I'm the carpenter business because it's my accounts payable. So I'm the carpenter. How could I reduce this amount there? Okay, to be able to make that smaller so my current ratio is bigger mathematically and in, in real terms. All right, now the method I use depends on the particular situation I'm in. But the first thing I could do to reduce my accounts payable is I could pay my accounts payable at the very last date they are due. This would free up cash and improve liquidity working capital. Again, <coughs> cash is king. If I wait until the last minute to pay my accounts payable without any bill, any, any fees, because it's the very last day, not after, then it leaves more cash in my business for longer. If I use that cash to pay it early, then yeah, that's, that's lower, sure, the um, accounts payable, but that cash is now gone too. Less cash, less liquid. Secondly, make sure you make all payments on time to avoid late fees. Now you might be saying, whoa, 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 whoa. how does this make sense? Pay at the last date it's due and then make sure it's paid on time so you don't have to pay any fees. Yeah, pay it the very last day. Not earlier, not later. Because if you pay it later, then you get another 10% fee. I don't know, $100, whatever. That makes that accounts payable larger because they're going to chuck a fee on there or fees it if you take too long. And therefore, your ratio between your current assets and your current liabilities, the liabilities will be bigger. Not good. Thirdly, potentially pay the accounts early if the supplying... Whoa, again, what? Early? So you're <clears throat> having too much to... I won't say anything because it's YouTube. But why do you pay it early? You pay it early, potentially, they're offering discounts for early payment. You've heard that before. That makes sense. If they're going to give me a discount for paying early, then that account's payable is now smaller. Sure, I'm using cash to do that, so I'd have to weigh it up, but it would make the actual amount small. True. Fourthly, lastly, you can take advantage of business trade credit. In this example, you might get three months to pay your payables. It's very similar to really the, the first one. You just wait until that last date to make that payment. You you take it. It's like people with credit cards. You know, they're never good at it, but if they are, you get 50 days free um, credit on a credit card. Okay, you pay it on the 50th day. Problem is, no one does. No one does. I don't even, and I'm friggin' tight something, tight bum. Okay, you, 
you pay it too late and then you get all these stupid fees. But something to think about. Now, loans, here's the next way to control your current liabilities. A business will have many short-term loans, such as business loans or personal loans. This is a strategy. A business can prove its liquidity by sourcing finding the best loan with the lowest fees and the cheapest interest rates. If they do this, okay, then the loan section of the current liability will not necessarily fall over time, but become less. Well, it will, it will fall over time because you're getting a cheaper interest rate. Thus, it'll improve liquidity because your current liability is lower. If they have a higher one, because they haven't shopped around, then they'll be paying more interest, take longer to pay down that loan, and your, your current, it's a short-term loan still, but your current liability will be higher, and it's bad for your uh, working capital ratio, for your liquidity. Now, overdrafts, very similar to the strategy above. If all businesses can have all accounts receivable paid instantaneously into their overcart, overdraft accounts, then they can minimize interest on these accounts. This is because the interest earned from having a savings account for the cash of the business is less than the interest needed to be paid in the business in the overdraft account. So you earn more money, well, you earn money having your cash in your bank account, in your savings account, but you know, you probably know you've got a savings account. The interest is so small these days. Like I have $10,000 in my account, like, oh, rich mixer. But I'm earning a dollar each month or whatever, a dollar in interest, like big crap. You don't earn much. But I can rest assured, if you have 10 grand in your overdraft account, you're paying more than a dollar in interest. It's better to whack that coin into your overdraft loan because it's a high rate of interest. In addition to this, the business can, as above, source the cheapest um, interest rate on the overdraft account. Then over time, that current liability would not be as high as what otherwise may well have been. Improve the ratio. All right, getting there. Get, seriously getting there, thank God. The last two are the strategies, the official strategies you're asked to talk about strategies. But if you're asked to talk about it in an essay, talk about all of them. Now, these are the ways in which liquidity working capital can be improved. There's leasing and sale and leaseback. All right, they're both very similar, like because sale, and leaseback is like sale and leasing. So just missing the sale part for leasing. All right, now, <clears throat> in terms of, let's start with leasing. I want you to sort of think about your, your balance sheet, have that in your mind, visualize it. We're only with leasing really probably looking here at your asset side. You've got your non-current asset and you've got your, um, your current assets. Current assets, non-current assets. Let's say you've got $50,000 in cash in business A. You could spend 50 grand on cash on the new photocopy or the new vehicle. That leaves you with zero cash, right? And um, you would have a $50,000 asset in your non-current assets down the bottom in terms of the photocopy or all the car. So the, the balance sheet still balances. Your assets are still equal to what they were before. You've just moved 50,000 from the current assets to the non-current assets. Doing that though is not good for, you guessed it, liquidity management and for your current slash working capital ratio because think of that ratio. Your working capital ratio is your current assets compared to current liabilities. You had $50,000 prior to buying this photocopier. Now it's really bad. It's almost, you know, non-existent. What could you do instead? And this strategy, is only if you had to get a non-current asset. If you don't need it, then don't do it. You could lease it. If you're leasing it, you don't lose that 50 grand. All right, it might come out in terms of your cash flow statement stuff, but we're looking at a balance sheet and working capital management. Does that make sense? It's not, it's not a strategy to improve things, but it's a strategy with leasing to make it not worse. All right, you look at the option whereby you must get this new photocopier, why don't we lease it instead? Therefore, we don't have to move the $50,000 in the current asset to make it zero down to the $50,000 new photocopier we have as a non-current asset. Now, if you don't get that, come and see me. It is a bit tricky. The last one is sale and lease back. It's essentially the same, okay? But what happens here is 
you sell. It's kind of the reverse, I guess, but the same, and that sounds weird, but let's say you had a photocopier. You've already got it. You've had it for a year or something. It's worth $50,000. Photocopies are damn expensive. It's worth $50,000. It's in the non-current asset because you don't tend to sell them every day. You have it there for 10 years, you get a new one. So it's a non-current asset, $50,000. Remember, with our current ratio, our working capital ratio, our liquidity ratio, all the same, we don't care about non-current liabilities or assets. We only give a crap about current assets. So we want to move this non-current asset, the photocopier, it's worth 50000 from that to current asset, we want to turn into cash. We can do it easy. We sell that photocopier. Thanks, sir. Thanks, man. Fifty thousand dollars. You can take my crappy photocopier, and it's now fifty grand that's in our balance sheet in cash, bank account, and also balance sheet. It'll show up in both as cash. You're selling your non-current asset, and you get cash, and you now lease it instead. You lease one instead. That's why lots of businesses lease it because it's a good liquidity slash working capital strategy. Don't worry about profitability and all the other crap. We're talking about just liquidity. And you think about now your current asset compared to your current liability, you've now got an extra 50 grand there in cash. All right, again, if you're getting that well done, because it's a hard concept. If not, come see me. See you later, guys.